So I'm going to talk about um, understanding the back of the pattern envelope when you've bought your pattern, understanding how much fabric to buy, um, and some important things that you may not be aware of um, that I need to draw your attention to, especially when you're um, a beginner. So it's really important to read the back of the envelope. There's a lot of information on here that will help you decide if this is the right pattern for you, if this is the right pattern for the fabric that you might have already chosen that you'd like to make it out of, and also um, understanding if it's the right, um, whether you, you can use a pattern or a stripe or a, a check and whether it's a suitable pattern for that. So first of all, I'm going to start by um, just going through all this information so that you understand it. So the very first thing there will be is a description of what the garment is. Now, for this particular um, pattern, which is a dress, it says a lined dress has fitted bodice, lingerie hoops, brackets thread, underskirt and invisible back zipper. Purchased bias tape to finish hem and optional bugle and seed beads to embellish floral design. So from that, there's quite a lot I can um, detain. First of all, it says lined dress, so I know it's lined. So if you don't want to do a lined dress or you're not at that stage, then obviously this isn't the pattern for you because it won't show you how to finish it if it's unlined. Then it says has fitted bodice. Now fitted is a description of the fit of any garment. And when it says fitted, it means that it's fairly close fitting to the body. Now there's several th ways that they describe the fit. They might say um, loose fitting, very loose fitting, fitted, semi fitted. And then it says uh, lingerie loops. Well, that's just uh, loops that go under your bra straps, really, on the shoulders. So don't worry about those. Underskirt. That means it has a separate uh, skirt lining that is almost like wearing a slip, really. An invisible back zipper. So that means that a concealed zip or invisible zip. So if you haven't put one of those in before, it's not going to show you how to put a normal coiled zip in. Then it says purchased bias tape. That means that they've used ready prepared bias that you can buy in packets. You can make your own bias, but it's not going to show you how to do that. They've used that to do on the hem because it's a very full hem, uh, and to you need some bias tape to make it lay flat. Um, and then it says optional bugle beads and to embellish. Well, that's just saying that you can decorate it afterwards if you like. Now, um, the next thing it's got is the uh, the sizing. And you'll notice that um, they come in multi-size now patterns. This one is um, the, the bigger size, the 14 to the 22. But say you were looking at this information online or you hadn't yet bought your pattern, it shows you the two... Um, sizes that you can buy and one covers 6 to 14 and one covers 14 to 22. Now different patterns uh, straddle different sizes so they're not always the same. Sometimes you'll get one that does 6 to 12 and then 14 to 18 and then 20 to 26 or something like that. So just make sure that you do buy the right one. I'll talk a bit more about the sizing uh, later on so that you understand what size to buy. But make sure you buy the right size, first of all. And then it's got fabrics. And this is suggested fabrics for the dress that this designer has designed. And that's quite important too, because if you're trying to make something look like the picture, for example, it's not going to look like the picture if you don't buy the right fabric. Now, you will find that there's a lot of Americanized words um, in, in this description not always i don't know that there is here but I'll, I'll find some other examples so it says fabrics crepe silk jaguard linen blends well actually they're all english terms but if i find um another one yes here this is a coat and it says uh lightweight velvet lightweight tweed denim and broadcloth well broadcloth isn't something we say in this country it's an american term uh, all you need to do is find one that you understand. So if you understand what silk is, 
and you know that that's a lightweight soft fabric that has drape so all these crepe silk jaguard linen blends are fairly soft and will have a bit of flow because obviously this is quite a full skirt you wouldn't want it to just stick out and then it says um, lining for the bodice is a stretch mesh and lining for the underskirt is organza and lining for the basic part of the dress is a lining fabric so it's telling me it's got like a separate organza layer that you often have in evening dresses or party dresses that just make the skirt stand out more um, but so they're asking you to buy a certain type of uh, fabric for that which has quite a lot of body to it which is going to help it stand out um, but the fabric description will help you to choose the material that you're going to buy I'm just looking at this one which is a skirt different this is a simplicity pattern and it says light to medium weight woven fabric such as batiks brocade chalice another American word crepe back satin crepe de chine denim linen types peak poplin sateen taffeta Again, if you don't understand any of those descriptions, just Google them and they'll give you a description of what that fabric is. They'll say something like woven, average weight fabric with some body or something like that. And it'll guide you as to the correct fabric you need to buy for the uh, pattern. That's not to say you can't use other fabrics. It's just that the fit, they've allowed the fitting of this for a certain weight. So you will find it won't fit as well. You'll have to do a lot more adjustments if you used a lot much more heavier fabric, say, than they're describing. So then it says, mine says, unsuitable for obvious diagonals. That means a fabric with a diagonal design. And the reason that this is unsuitable, I know, is because of this skirt. Because the diagonals, when it hangs down, won't look good. If it was a straight skirt, it might work fine, but it's not going to work with this. But they, they don't tell you why. They just say it's not suitable. So don't buy a fabric with a diagonal line. And then it says, there's a little icons here. I don't know if you can see it. It says one star with nap, two stars without nap. Now, if you don't understand what nap is, I'll explain it now. A true nap is like a pile or a one, one way uh, design fabric. So... Say you've got a velvet or a corduroy, um, obviously that it has a raised surface and the pile goes in a certain direction. And that means that the, all the pattern pieces, when you cut them out, have to go in the same direction. Otherwise the light catches it differently and it looks incorrect. So anything that has a true nap, like velvet or corduroy, you would have to use the amount to buy for with nap. If you buy a fabric that has a one-way design, say you have a fabric that has uh, birds on it and all the birds are facing upwards, uh, then obviously that's the same thing. You have to have all those birds going up your garment on the sleeves and the, the body. So you would need to use the amount of fabric to buy with nap because it's the same process. Um, so when you look at the uh, amount to buy next to the fabric widths they've got whether it's with nap or without nap now sometimes it's got both and that just means that it doesn't matter the way the pattern has been laid out means that um, it doesn't matter which one you buy it's all they're all facing in the same direction but sometimes you will see one star a certain amount of fabric and then two stars another amount you just have to know has your fabric got a nap or a one-way design if it has you need to buy the yardage or amount of fabric for a with nap layout if it doesn't then you can have a without nap layout and obviously that uses less fabric you will notice that there's two widths of fabric mentioned 45 inch or 60 inch and in metric you have to go across to the French again because patterns are aimed at the American market they put the English and Imperial and metric in French so um, you just need to read across so it says 115 or 150 now fabric does come in other widths um, fabric used to be in only three widths that was the old yard and then 45 inch and 60 inch 
but over time we now have fabric made all over the world from different loom sizes so you will see fabric that is 110 centimeters wide 115 118 120 130 135 140 142 148 150 a real wide range now basically you need to find one that is the nearest obviously but if it's straddling the two, say you've got one that's 135 centimetres wide, then my advice is to go down to the narrower for the amount that you need to buy because you're going to end up with more fabric than you need. If you go up to the higher one and you buy this amount of fabric, you might find you don't have enough because obviously your fabric's going to be a bit narrower. So identify what your fabric is that you're buying and, and decide which one it's closest to. And then you have to read across according to your size to know what to buy. So if you were, say, a size 14 on this particular size chart and you were buying, say, 120 centimetres wide, well, that's closest to 150, then you read across and you find how much and it's 2 metres 20. The next thing it has is a fusible interfacing. Now, interfacing is something that we put in uh, places that we need to stabilise or create heavier weight, like collars, cuffs, um, down the front of a shirt, in a waistband. Uh, and we use them in tailoring as well to uh, provide the stability and the tailoring in jackets, etc. But basically for dressmaking, you'll be using fusible, which means that you iron it on. Um, and again... The amounts that they give for the widths of the interface are American. We only get interface in this country in 115 wide. Now they've got it as 46 inch wide and 51 inch wide. So obviously you're going to have more than you need if you buy what they say. And probably that's the best thing to do because you can always use it on another project. But don't be put off by the fact that it's a different width. Uh, so you need to buy it the fabric and the interface because if it says interface it means that you're going to need it and then there's amounts for linings well I'm not going to go into that really because probably you wouldn't start with a lined garment but this has amounts for the the linings the same widths are linings although they do tend to come closer to these amounts normally they're 115 or 150 wide and then it's got notions well notions are just the other things that you need to buy to complete your garment like a button or a zip or some bias or something and again although this is in English you will need to look at, at the French to find the lengths if for the metric so it says 12 inch invisible zipper so you just need to read across and you'll find that that is 30 centimeters make sure you get everything that you need to complete your garment in one go otherwise it's going to be frustrating if you get to put the zip in and you haven't yet got it um, and then there's a couple of really interesting pieces of information at the bottom here. Finished garment measurements. And they give you two finished garment measurements. And this is the actual garment, not your body. So they're giving you the width at the lower edge and the back length from the base of your neck. Now the width of the lower edge is telling you how big it is, like as far as the fullness is concerned. And the length from the base of the neck is telling you how... Well, if you're extra tall, that actually it might not be long enough, or if you're very short, you're going to have loads. If you find that, say, say you are much taller, you want it much longer than what they have said, and you don't have to use the back of your neck, you can just use the hollow at the front of your neck to measure yourself in the mirror for the, for the total length. If you find that it's a bit too short, and say you need the dress to be 10 centimetres longer, then my advice is to buy 20 centimetres more fabric. And the reason that I'm asking you to buy double is because you don't know how it's laid out, whether the back and the front are side by side or they're on different parts of the material. So if you buy twice the amount, then you'll always be okay. So whether you need your skirt longer, your trousers longer, or your sleeves longer, sleeves will always be cut out together, but if you always buy twice as much, you're always going to have enough fabric, so and you won't get confused. Now, um, I'm going to talk um, a little bit about the garment measurements and your body measurements now. Because at the top of the pattern, you will find your body measurements. 
Now, in on commercial patterns these days, and I'm talking about Vogue, Butterick, McCall's, Simplicity, Style, New Look, and Burda. The pattern sizing is roughly two sizes smaller than the shop sizing that we currently have today. So if you're a 14 in the shops, you're more likely going to be an 18 in a dress pattern. And if you're a, an 8 in the shops, you're more likely going to be a 12 in a dress pattern. And that's because the sizing for patterns hasn't really changed since the kind of late 50s really. And people were a lot smaller in those days. Unfortunately, the um, high street has massaged our sizing to make us feel a bit smaller than we really are. If you go back, say, pre-1930 patterns, you will find that they're three sizes too small. So do be aware of that. And also with vintage patterns, um, they only ever came in one size. So you won't have all the grading lines on them to know how to grade them to make them bigger, which we do on these multi-size patterns, so, which is an advantage. Um, so you need to measure yourself uh, and I'm going to do a separate video on how to measure yourself and obviously that is the size of the pattern you're going to buy and the size that you're going to read off for the amount of fabric so although you might only be a 14 like me I, I need to really look at a size 18 on these um, for how much fabric to buy and plus I know I have extra long arms so I always buy a bit extra for that the basic patterns that you will find in commercial patterns are Vogue, Butterick, Style, Simplicity, um, McCall's, uh, Burda, and New Look, and then you'll have Quick Sew and ones like that. And they're kind of in that order as far as how I think they are very helpful in giving you instructions. The Vogue ones are by far the best instructions. Um, as are Butterick, um, McCall's, not too bad, and then I would go Simplicity, Style, Burda, um, lovely patterns, really good fit, but they expect you to know quite a lot because they are a German make. And then New Look and Quick Sew are kind of a bit um, low end, I'd say, but they're still, they're still okay. Their, their instructions aren't quite so good, I think. So when you're learning, maybe buy a, a Vogue or a, a Butterick is a good one to start with. Um, and get try and get a very easy, um, here's one that says quick and easy. Sometimes they say very easy, sometimes they say easy. And then it goes average, difficult, advanced. So you be guided by that as well because that might help you. I mean, this one says easy. This one I think is average, um, so not that easy. Um, I don't know if, oh yeah, even Berger have put average here. Although I'd say that's quite difficult if you're a beginner. So really probably stick with very easy to start with. I don't think simplicity say anything on theirs. Um, so different patterns have different uh, ways of describing. Um, you might also notice on, on Vogue they have these symbols as well, these little triangles. And this is actually a fit guide. So if you are an inverted triangle, that means you're, you've got wide shoulders and bust and a small waist. Or you are uh, a triangle shape at the bottom, i.e. you have a smaller waist and larger hips. Or you're an hourglass, this is a good pattern for you. But it's only Vogue that do that. The other patterns don't have it on. Uh, some of the patterns give you various cup sizes as well. So you need to think about that as well if you are buying one of those. So that is how to read the back of the envelope. Um, I think the next uh, video you'd need to look at is how to measure yourself and understand sizing. And then understanding how to decide which size and um, you know which which one you're going to follow how you're going to make sort of small adjustments uh, when you cut out and then the next thing I will go on to will be the inside instructions but this will cover everything that you need if you want to buy your fabric and buy your pattern